welcome to the Nacha Healing Show. Keep it Nacha. We are the Nacha Healing Show. Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show with UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kurigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKurigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how to heal yourself naturally. Our guest today is Melissa Ayers. Melissa Ayers is a menopause coach homeopath, and theta healing practitioner. You can find out more about Melissa Ayers and her wonderful work at her website, melissajayers.com. Welcome, Melissa Ayers. Hi, Catherine. So lovely to be speaking to you. Thank you for having me on the show. So, Melissa, we are talking today about how to have a healthy menopause. How did you get into the work of helping women have a healthy menopause. So I, um, I've been a homeopath for many years. I've used homeopathy and natural medicine for a long time in my life. And uh, at the age of 47, I started with perimenopausal symptoms, which for me was, you know, really out of the blue and quite sudden. Um, Having had regular cycles for many years, my cycle became very irregular. I was going long periods without having a cycle. And I started experiencing some symptoms that you sort of commonly associate with menopause as well. So hot flushes, something so strange for me because I've always been quite a chilly person. (laughs) And it's not like an ordinary heat. You just heat up suddenly within your core. It's it's incredible that the body can do that. Um, Migraines, um, sleeplessness, bladder irritability, all of these things. And I actually managed to turn these symptoms around and heal them within just a matter of weeks using homeopathy. And also um, a lot of my skills as an intuitive healer as well. So for me, I, I then felt that I just wanted to share this with, with the women I work with. I work with a lot of women. Um, I have done helped thousands of women over the years with all sorts of health conditions. But this really enabled me um, a way to put together a program um, that combines all of my skills, so homeopathy and the intuitive healing. So I developed the Menopause Revolution program, which is where I work one-to-one to women, supporting them through this this lifetime transition. So yeah, really, perimenopause for me, as it does for many women, it, it wakes up new ideas and all sorts of um, wonderful abilities within us. For me, this is the perfect way to combine my two um, therapies if you like and in the best way I can to support women and I believe Melissa Ayers you have a free gift for our audience I do yes this is really exciting um I have a uh, a free 30 minute masterclass called managing perimenopause and menopause naturally so you can download that at my website or from Instagram or Facebook the links on there and that contains lots of lovely juicy information about um things I've done and other things that I see um, that can support women at, at the change of life, the perimenopause and menopause. And Melissa, is, is my understanding, you yourself are actually in perimenopause, correct? That's right, yes. Yeah. I'm 63 and I've been through menopause and you mentioned about the hot flashes. And I can remember I was very blessed because I was very, very healthy when I went through menopause, not on any medication, not in any particular adrenal stress. And I tell all my clients as a medical intuitive healer, you really want to prepare for menopause as much as you can, because it really is a huge change. And even though I was completely healthy, no pharmaceutical drugs, no particular adrenal stress, it was a huge change. And you mentioned about the hot flashes and someone who's not been through menopause, or if you're a man and you're listening to this, it is the strangest thing. I remember I would be just sitting there 
Like I would be in a restaurant and all of a sudden I'd be really, really hot. And then about 10 minutes later, I'd be really, really cold. <laughs> it was the craziest thing. So I really uh, became a fan of shawls. I developed this huge shawl collection because with shawls, it's easier than a cardigan to take on and off. So Melissa Irish, for our audience, will you explain what happens to women's bodies at menopause? Yeah, of course, Catherine. So as we're going towards menopause, what's happening, it, it's a completely natural um, transition. It's as natural as puberty. It's another life stage. And I know um, currently in mainstream here in the UK, I'm not sure what it's like in the States, but there's a lot of negativity around menopause. And something I'm keen to share is that, you know, your body isn't going wrong. You're not on the decline. You're not becoming hormone deficient. It's not the end. Um, this is a natural life transition. Um, as natural as we go through puberty as teenagers. So essentially what's happening, whereas in puberty we're becoming fertile, when we get to menopause, we're no longer be being fertile as in able to produce babies. We can go on to be creative in all, all sorts of other ways. But the, the body's, yeah, the body's reproductive system is essentially retiring. Um, that's what's happening at menopause. And it was interesting you talked about um, your state of health and the run up to it. Um, I consider myself being a natural health practitioner, you know, healthy too, but it is so important um, in perimenopause as you approach that to really give your body, you know, the best start it can to go into menopause. There's so many, whether we're completely healthy, as you said, Catherine, it, it, it's, it's a transition and transitions do come with some bumps in the road. So yeah, really important to step up the self-care and look after ourselves at this time and support our body through this natural transition. Yeah, and I can remember when I went into menopause, I, I mentioned the hot flashes. The other thing that happened was the insomnia became really extreme. And um, <clears throat> so the simplest form of torture is sleep deprivation. So loss of sleep or having difficulty sleeping is a real common side effect of menopause. And the other thing that happened was that I went up an entire gene size and I didn't change what I was eating. I think in the U.S. the statistics are the average woman gains eight to 10 pounds during what menopause. So what was interesting was I didn't, and I'm, healthy weight and five three I'm not very big I'm five three 116 pounds so no one really feels sorry for you when you're small to begin with and you go up a gene size not that I was looking for pity but the point is that I didn't change anything <laughs> and my bot but my body changed and however the good news is that I continued with my healthy eating and exercise and my body just naturally went back to the size that it's been. I've been the same size that I have been since I was about 28 years old. So Melissa Ayers, menopause coach, why do you think that menopause is not a smooth transition for so many uh, other women, many women, period? Yes, you're right, Catherine. I mean, 20% of it with statistics, 20% of women do sail through menopause symptom free. Well, we, we don't often hear about their stories, but you're right. That leaves a large percentage of us women that are struggling at this time of life. And I think this is really to do with um, where we are in the world. So you and I are in um, the Western area of the world. Um, how we, how menopause is viewed, how we really experience really affects how we will experience it I really believe that so it's largely viewed as a negative thing in the west you know it's aging hormone deficient a little bit about this before with um with mainstream so that really affects how we're going to go into it but the other thing that I really think is interesting in, in western society is all of the other hormone disruptors that are going on so I see that there's five key disruptors to hormonal health and this is from my experience of working with women and with my own health so being out of touch with our natural rhythms and natural cycles so much in the west is about you know 
being the same 24 7 365 days a year you know very much following that masculine model of doing all the time we don't take that downtime that we very much need in the luteal the second phase of our cycles um an overload of environmental toxins in the body so well-known endocrine disruptors pesticides heavy metals electromagnetic frequencies bpa and plastics and all the chemicals we use in cleaning products toiletries cosmetics this takes quite a toll on the body. Synthetic hormones, which even if we're not taking them directly, they're in our water supply due to the large numbers of women using hormonal products. And they're also fed to livestock to keep them producing milk and fatten them up, which we then ingest through foods. Um, pesticides contain xenoestrogens, especially those sprayed on grains. We challenge detoxification pathways in the body, especially if you know, your diet isn't great, it's poor nutrition is a factor. So an excessive consumption of caffeine, junk food, alcohol, sugar, places an excess burden on the liver. Um, and the liver is actually very important in menopause. I know in Chinese medicine, they say a healthy menopause is very much down to the health of your liver, but the liver regulates our sleep and wake cycles. So interesting about, we were talking about insomnia, um, sleeplessness, Catherine, and it also deals with excess estrogen. Um, so if our liver's not functioning well, it is going to have an impact on our cycle, you know, and menopause. And life load, that's the fifth and most, the key disruptor I see to hormonal health is emotional and mental stress and trauma. So if you think about it, women in Western areas, by the time we've got to our 40s and 50s, it's the accumulation of all of this. Even if we've led a relatively healthy lifestyle, if you've not been honoring and in tune with your natural cycle that's 30 years of ignoring your natural rhythms and then um, i like to use the bath analogy if you imagine it's like a bath filled with toxins you know the plug has got to come out that's one of the um my theories with hot flushes actually sweating and raised body temperature is an extremely efficient way for the body to detox so all of these things i think are why women are not having um, an easy time in menopause in the west and so for our audience, you mentioned the five key disruptors of hormone balance. So as bullet points, can you go over those again for our audience? Of course, yes. So being out of touch with our natural rhythms and cycles, an overload of environmental toxins, synthetic hormones, which not just taken directly, but in our food and our water, challenge detoxification pathways, especially um, the function of the liver, and life load. That's what I like to call emotional and mental stress and trauma that, that's built up. And, and as women, we're, you know, we're very emotional creatures. And, uh, you know, emotions can get stuck and stored in the body. I'm sure as a, a medical intuitive, you see lots of that, Catherine. So that's really great information. And, you know, if you think about this, Melissa Ayers, addressing these five areas simply lead a person to better health. And when I talk to my clients who are premenopausal, I tell them, if you think you have weight problems now or emotional imbalance now, you really, really need to get your body in greater balance, your whole mind, body, spirit in greater balance, because menopause really is a bigger change than any most women ever anticipate. So I think that all the challenges that are in these five areas become even more pronounced during menopause because of all the changes that are going on. So your sensitivity to chemicals, your sensitivity to emotions, your sensitivity to um, <clears throat> your circadian rhythms all become bigger at that time. So with that, Let's take a break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio, and we'll come back to hear more from Melissa Ayers about how to have a, a healthy menopause. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. So Melissa Ayers, 
you mentioned the five key disruptors of hormone balance. And again, it's my view when I'm working with my clients as a medical intuitive healer who are moving towards menopause um, and the average age of menopause, at least in the Western world, I believe is around age 51. So if you're in your 40s um, or early 50s, you're premenopausal. Um, and many women, I've had clients go into menopause in their early 40s depending on how balanced they kept themselves. So one of the things that I look at is how balanced you're keeping your health and how balanced you are physically, energetically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritual, spiritually. Can you talk for our audience about the wisdom of the female hormonal cycle, which has its own natural balance rhythms? That's right. Yeah, no, I, I love talking about this, Catherine. So, you know, we're very privileged as women. Um, our periods each month are more than a release of blood. They're a big emotional release as well. And as women, um, emotions build up in our sacral chakra, which is situated in our pelvic bowl. Um, it's the center of our creativity, but it can also be like the bottom drawer, if you like, um, that collects all the emotional stuff. So every time we have a period, it's a big emotional release as well. And that's why I'm sure some of your clients say it too, Catherine. Lots of my clients are so much better when they actually start their period. So it's a very, very valuable um, asset that we have as women. I, in ancient times, I know women would go off to bleed together. They would be in sync with their cycles. That's where the term the red tent comes from. And men would actually ask them to release emotional stuff for them then because they don't have this innate ability so readily available to them so our cycle if we're in a natural cycle is sort of in rhythm with the cosmos so in our estrogen phase we're in um it, it's like the growth phase you know we've got the potential of creating new life um estrogen is very high um and you can synchronize your cycle with the moon so in the estrogen phase we're um working with the uh, with the uh, waxing moon then we come into our luteal phase, which is when progesterone is the dominant hormone. And if ovulate, if um, conception hasn't occurred at ovulation, that's the real time that we should be slowing down, coming back to self. But so many women will just continue to power through. And I think society and men, you know, the whole patriarchy expects us to be in this bouncy, bubbly estrogen phase the whole time through. And that's just not the case. We actually need to come back to self and slow down because then we have this big release and we're preparing again for a new cycle. So, you know, we need to rest and recuperate and restore in order to be in, in full um, power and energy for that new cycle. But if over years and years we've never honoured that, we've never slowed down or we viewed our luteal, our progesterone phase, as you know, or PMT and cranky, it's kind of undesirable. If we've ignored our bodies for that long, I think what happens at perimenopause and menopause is the body will start to shout very loud. Um, you need to come, you know, back to self, um, honouring this. Interesting, um, as I was talking about periods or an emotional release, you know, we we lose that ability to release those emotions in menopause because we're not having um, a monthly bleed. We're retaining, if you like, the, the menstrual wisdom, but that's why it's so important to take care of yourself in perimenopause and in the build-up to menopause and make sure you have released um, whatever it is that doesn't serve you, whatever it is that you're not wanting to take with you into this new life chapter that is menopause because actually we've lost that ability to just release that every month physically. I agree with what you're seeing, Melissa Ayers, so much. And one of the things that I tell my clients who are still having their period is that your period and how easy or difficult that is, is kind of like a report card on how well you have or have not taken care of yourself over the previous month. So if you've eaten a lot of junk food and gone through a lot of stress, and over exercised, then more than likely, you're going to have much worse symptoms at uh, your period. And it's my observation as a medical intuitive healer, that menopause is 
sort of like that writ large. So if a woman has not taken care of her diet or if she's not found balance in her exercise program or not found ways to manage her stress and eating really toxic foods and putting a lot of toxic chemicals on her body, when she comes to menopause, it's going to be much, much harder. So your body, one of the things we know is that our bodies are always communicating with us. And when we're having insomnia, hot flashes, fatigue, period cramps, and so on, these are all important messages for us to pay attention to. So, and we can begin to become more in tune with ourselves while we're still menstruating. And I, I love that you explain about the natural cycles of the female hormonal cycle, because I find that many of my clients, they need to adjust their exercise program during the last half of their cycle. They need to be doing gentler exercise. They need to be listening to their bodies more, not over-exercising, maybe giving themselves rest days from the gym. So Melissa Ayers, what do you think is happening to women energetically and spiritually at menopause? Yeah, I, I just that point you just made actually about exercise, Catherine, that's it's so important in your luteal phase not to be doing that exercise that's, you know, the high cardio, high impact, you know, running, cycling in, in your luteal phase, because what that does is that puts additional stress on the adrenal glands. And that what's happening at menopause is the adrenal glands are picking up the estrogen that's declining in the ovaries you know nature doesn't get it wrong <laughs> the body we're equipped from birth with all of the hormones we need as women to sustain us into old age so we really need to honor that and like you say slowing down and doing more restorative exercise like yoga and tai chi is, is really important in in that luteal phase so in answer to your question what's happening to us spiritually and energetically at perimenopause and menopause well i believe we have three stages of life as women we have the virgin the mother and the wise woman phase and even if you haven't had children you will have been creating things in that in that time of life so what's happening is we're moving into the most empowered time as our of our lives as women and this is kind of what comes up emotionally you know i know many women suffer with this roller coaster of mood swings and i really believe that all this emotional stuff that we haven't dealt with that's coming up to be dealt with so that we can be in our most empowered version of ourselves in menopause. Um, I speak to women, um, I'm sure you're you know, very aware of this too, Catherine, and I speak to women who are in menopause or post-menopause and there's a whole new sense of vibrance, confidence. They're no longer subject to the ebbs and flows of a monthly cycle. Um, they're creative, intuitive, intuitive psychic abilities really open up at this time. So it's actually a really exciting time in our lives. But it's like menopause shines a spotlight on us too. That's how it can be quite an empowering time for women as well, because it's time to decide what do we need to change about our lives? What do we need to clear in order to move through, you know, into this most powerful phase and fulfill um what we want to do now most of us have raised our children you know what is it that we want to explore in this in this new chapter so let's take it back to the physical because um one of the things that we know scientifically is that before menopause your adrenal glands make about 20 to sorry about um 20 to 40 percent of your estrogen and after menopause, they make about 90% of our estrogen. So if we go into menopause in a state of adrenal burnout, then we're going to have serious problems. One of my 10 books is called Unlimited Energy Now, and it's all about how to restore your adrenal health and how to get your energy back. And so many of my clients come to me in their late 40s, and they're just completely burned out from working from taking care of children and then also some of them are also taking care of their elderly parents 
So if you're listening to this program and you're wanting to know how do I have a healthy menopause, a really good place to start is by restoring your adrenal health, by rebuilding your adrenals. And um, my book, Unlimited Energy Now, goes through what I refer to as the five levels of healing, what you need to do on the physical level, on the energetic level, on the emotional, mental, and spiritual level. But I just think it's really critical if you don't listen, remember anything we say today, except for this, if you want to have a healthy menopause, don't go into menopause in a state of adrenal burnout. Realize that menopause is coming and your adrenal glands are going to be even more stressed as you go through this change. So the more that you can restore your adrenal health before the change, the easier time you will have it. Now, Melissa Ayers, you are a homeopath. Are there any particular homeopathic remedies that are good, general, um, helpful remedies, homeopathic remedies for women in as they go through menopause? Yes, there are. And it's interesting you talked about stress and adrenals there, Catherine. Um, you absolutely, I 100% agree with you. Um, you know, there's a saying, isn't there, stress causes 99% of illness um, and that's you know that that goes for menopause not that menopause is an illness but it will cause dis-ease within the body uh, so there are lots of homeopathic remedies actually we can use to support adrenal health as well as hormonal health um, it might help if I explain a little bit to the listeners here about um, what homeopathy is and how it actually works so homeopathy um, predates conventional medicine it's still around for well over 200 years and you can essentially you can make a homeopathic remedy from anything um, homeopathic remedies are highly diluted substances we work by something called the law of similars so homeopathy was started by uh, a medical doctor called Samuel Hahnemann he wrote a book called the organon in 1810 the organon of natural medicine um, he actually developed homeopathy in response to the quite barbaric practices of that time which were emetics and bloodletting he was looking for a more gentle way to treat his patients because often they um they would lose their lives just through the treatment they were getting from conventional doctors and he was translating a paper on the use of chinchona bark in malaria and what he actually decided to take some and what he found was it produced the symptoms of malaria so by diluting and succussing which literally means to shake vigorously is how we make a homeopathic remedy so that removes um, any toxicity from it, it renders it safe. Um, it's very, you know, it's a very gentle way to treat the body. So, it's, homeopathic remedies are it's essentially energy medicine, and the way it works is it stimulates the body's own healing system. So, we all have innate wellness. Um, if you if you were to break a bone, your body goes into action on how to heal that. So, what homeopathy does is it harnesses that energy, and what the remedies do is they stimulate. Um, the body's own healing system to bring it back into balance. So when I work with women homeopathically, it's, it's not one size fits all medicine. It's a little bit of protective work. It's looking at what it is in their health history. That might be emotional, that might be physical, um, that's caused emotion to become imbalanced. And then we use remedies um, to gently bring the body back into balance. And it's very useful on the physical. So in answer to your question, Catherine, some of the remedies I use a lot of, um, there's a beautiful remedy called sepia. I use a lot in menopause. Sepia is, um, one other thing to say about homeopathic remedies is they are never tested on animals. They are approved by people. So people volunteer and they would take. Melissa, could you repeat that? Because I'm not sure that that word, you're, we heard what you said. What was the name of it? Uh, sepia. A beautiful sepia. remedy called sepia, which is made from the ink of the cuttlefish. So homeopathic remedies are proved. They're not tested, they're proved. You have a group of provers who would take the remedy and report their symptoms. And then we have, you know, over 200 years now, clinical um, evidence of using these remedies in practice. So sepia um, is a remedy we use with women where they've never been well since some kind of hormonal intervention or interruption. So childbirth, taking the pill. Um, and remedies, we look at 
how someone is emotionally, mentally and physically. So on the emotional level, sepia feels very angry. Uh, it's a great remedy for worn out, stressed out, you know, really energetically depleted women. And when I say they feel angry, it's that classic picture of TMT of being very snappy, irritable, snippy, one of my lovely ladies I work with, she likes to use the word, she feels very snippy with her family before her period. That's very, very sepia. Um, pulsatilla, I use a lot um, with hormonal um, issues, perimenopause and menopause. So pulsatilla is a little bit sort of very different to sepia in that they, they can be tearful we, um, and worn out, but they're not cross. They're, they're very weepy, incredibly sensitive. And um, you'd kind of want to give them a hug, whereas your sepia lady um, is a bit like, you know, in movies where they have women in childbirth and they're screaming at the men, what did you do to me? That's very sepia. Whereas pulsatilla makes you want to comfort her um, uh, and look after her. And, and, and pulsatilla is very good for where there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, cycles are irregular, cycles are completely um, not happening at all. We call that amenorrhea. And lack assist, that's a lovely remedy as well. We use in menopause for um, very good. Can, can you repeat that word again so we can hear it? Yeah, lack assist is lac another assist. remedy. Yeah, sepia, pulsatilla, and lack assist. Um, you can use these yourself, but I would really advise seeing a homeopath because, again, it's about someone objectively being able to look at your whole health history, your health picture, where you are energetically, emotionally, physically and matching a remedy to you in order that that's going to bring your body back into balance. That's how homeopathy works. So let's now talk about nutrition, because in my view, as a medical intuitive healer, we're, we're talking about hormonal balance. And when I'm ex explaining to my clients, I explained you have major hormones, meaning there's a lot of them, and minor hormones, which means they're not, there's less of them. So your major hormones are your insulin, which regulates your blood sugar and your stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol. And we already talked about if you go into menopause in a worn out state, you're going to have a you're going to have a hard time. One of the people that I've studied with over the years is Dr. Diana Schwartzbein, a medical doctor, a hormone expert. So I'm a certified hormone uh, Schwartzbein practitioner. So the you cannot have balanced hormones, female hormones, unless your nutrition is balanced. So as a menopause coach, Melissa Ayers, what are some of the um, approaches you re recommend for women in perimenopause and menopause to get their nutrition in greater balance? Yes, there's lots of things um, you can do in menopause and perimenopause to support your body nutritionally. So avoiding or limiting caffeine, alcohol, sugar, which are all huge adrenal stimulants and stresses on the adrenals. When I did my, I did some basic nutrition for homeopaths many years ago, and I remember being taught that one cup of coffee is the equivalent stress to the adrenals as if you were being chased by a lion. And of course your body's Hormones don't directly in, interact with actually what's really going on in the outside world, but that is the level of stress that produces. And as we've talked about, adrenal health going into menopause and perimenopause is so important. So cutting down on those adrenal stimulants is really important. Eating regularly to keep blood sugar levels, you know, every three to four hours, so we're not letting blood sugar levels dip too much, that can have a really profound effect on mood um, and, and energy levels. And there are some foods which, you know, are good to eat in menopause, not so great to eat in perimenopause. In perimenopause, because our estrogen progesterone levels are fluctuating quite wildly, it's sometimes not a good idea to overdo foods that are high in phytoestrogens like soya and tofu. But in menopause, actually, those foods can be really helpful um, because we're adding in phytoestrogens which basically just means plant-based estrogens into the body to support the estrogen levels that are naturally declining um, and uh, in the listen, i want to talk uh, make a little comment because i in general i agree with you but i'm going to add a caveat however a big however in the u.s soy is not treated as a food crop 
So soy can be sprayed with all kinds of really toxic chemicals. So if my clients, I, I, I tell my clients pre-menopause, only eat soy if you want to have um, <laughs> fat thighs and hormonal problems, right? However, when you're in menopause, if you do choose to eat soy, in my view, it needs to be organic because otherwise it's going to, you have to understand that it's going to, it will not be treated like a food crop. And so many um, things that are labeled as uh, food, such as a lot of the protein bars are made from soy protein. And it, again, it's not organic soy. So it's really important that you really think about the quality of the soy if you are going to use soy. I prefer things like real soy, like eat edamame beans, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I completely agree, Catherine. And making sure it's non-GMO is really important too. So eating organic whenever possible, um, you know, and if you are eating meat, you know, making sure it's grass fed, it's not fed with, you know, soy, as you say, and corn and all of those things, which can be heavily sprayed. Um, filtering your tap water, I'm, as we're talking about nutrition, you know, hydration is really important too, so that you're filtering out at least some of all those other medications um, and artificial hormones that can be in water as well. And it's interesting, actually, women in um, Japan um, rarely suffer with menopausal symptoms and their diets are very high in um, things like tofu and soy so yeah looking for a really good product and eating whole foods is so important if you're going for processed foods like the protein bars you just talked about that's going to be full of all sorts of stuff which was never in nature supposed to be combined together so eating whole foods you know whole grains whole fruit rather than processed foods is is really important and beneficial for the body um in any stage of health, but especially um, at this time where self-care just needs to be a priority. Now with that, let's take another break and listen to a message from our, one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio. And we'll be right back with more about how to have a healthy menopause with Melissa Ayers. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. So, Melissa Ayers, as a medical intuitive healer, the way I look at a person is physical, energetic, emotional, mental, and spiritual. So, let's you and I go through these different levels and talk about action steps. In other words, if someone's listening to this broadcast, what action steps can they take to be healthier while they're going through menopause? So, let's talk about physical. What physical steps do you recommend people do on the physical level? So, a lot of the things we've just talked about, Catherine, so, you know, a whole foods diet, eating regularly to keep blood sugar levels um, stable, cutting out on the adrenal um, stresses, caffeine, sugar, junk foods, alcohol, and exercise, and honoring the natural cycle. So doing all the cardio and high impact exercise, if you want to do that in your adrenal phase, but really slowing down and honoring. Um, the body's lead to heal phase and doing more gentle exercise, more restorative exercise like yoga, um, tai chi. So I would say that's um, what you can do on the physical level. And also, you know, seeking help from herbs and homeopathy. I would always advise um, finding someone to support you with that, finding a qualified professional to support you with that rather than going it alone. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to add a couple of things. As your hormone, as your estrogen levels drop, your body becomes stiffer. So I think practices like yoga and Tai Chi and Qigong are really helpful for helping your joints to main, to stay um, juicy. <laughs> it's so interesting I, as I've taught yoga now for 27 years and I have videos of myself practicing yoga when I was younger. 
And I, at age 63, I still teach eight yoga classes a week. But I look at the videos when I was younger, I was like, wow, it was so easy for me to bend over. So you have to understand that the loss of estrogen will absolutely affect your joint health. And so having practices that mobilize your joints and stretch the joints is really, really helpful, right? And then there's, yeah. there's um, uh, I, um, something I recommend frequently is maca powder. Get a good organic maca powder and it's gonna help your, um, your energy and your adrenals and getting enough B vitamins and minerals to support your adrenals, super, super healthy. So now let's talk about the energetic level on which the energetic level includes your chakras, your acupuncture system and your breath. And of course, just your overall energy. What do you recommend that people do on the energetic level? So you've just talked about yoga, Catherine. The breath work of yoga is just so good for us. Uh, even if you would just lie on your mat and breathe properly for the hour of your yoga class, you've, you've done yoga. Yoga, as you know, means unity with the breath. And alternate nostril breathing, Nadi Shadana, um, is well known for balancing out and calming the nervous system. So, it, you know, all of this is, is wonderful energetic work and, and brilliant for stress calming down the adrenals, calming down the nervous system, which is so important at perimenopause and menopause, um, as we've talked about. Um, energetically as well, um, I, I think this is, where, this is when emotional support is very important in um, perimenopause and menopause. And I think as women, we need the support of other women to go through this. I don't think it's something... Um, we can do alone and remembering that your endocrine glands your endocrine system which is the collective name for hormonal system the glands actually sit at the points of the seven chakras we have in the body as well so it's it's that combination of i know we're going through them um one by one but it, it, it's that combination of, of the um energetic support as well as the physical that's um really important in in perimenopause and menopause and energetically as well um, something I found personally have found really helpful is grounding or earthing so getting um, you know barefoot contact with the earth the earth's a huge um, reservoir of negative ions and in the west especially I talked a little bit about in my disruptors to hormonal health but electromagnetic fields um, they completely as soon as you were to touch a phone a laptop that interacts with your own electrical system and just um, being barefoot with the earth completely negates that, completely resets your energetic system. So grounding or earthing, which you can do free by barefoot contact with the earth, you can get grounding things like um, I have a mat under my laptop, you can get grounding sheets. All of those things really help um, energetically at perimenopause and menopause as well. Great information. Um, one of my 10 books is called The Little Book of Breathwork, and it contains a uh, routine that I call eight minutes to inner peace that'll cut your anxiety in half in eight minutes. So when, you're, when your hormone levels are low and changing, you're a lot more energetically and emotionally sensitive. So having those practices really, really help. What about on the emotional level? What do you recommend for women on the emotional level? Well, as I said earlier, I really feel that what comes up at perimenopause and menopause is all the emotional stuff that we haven't healed from, you know, these previous two life chapters. And I think our emotion, we have, we're more than a physical body. We have an emotional body and a mental body as well. And I think the emotional body, if things aren't dealt with there, that will come through to the physical. So something I did as well as um, using my natural health tools was work on my mindset around menopause. And that then makes a huge difference to physical symptoms as well. So it, it's like that going within. It's that deep exploration of, of emotional stuff. And as I said before, what do we need to let go of um, before we move into this final phase? So, you know, meditation, journaling, um, or seeking the support of a menopause coach or a practitioner that can support you with undoing this emotional stuff that comes up. What's really interesting as well 
is I'm sure you'll know this, Catherine, is um, we carry, we can carry ancestral genetic trauma for up to seven to eight generations back. So anything that's not been dealt with by our ancestors will can come up for healing for us at this time because it's like, you know, the menopause, the spotlight on our lives, it's the last chance to sort of really deal with stuff. And also, you know, a lot of the emotional stuff we're carrying as women is our mothers. You know, we our mother carries us for nine months. We pick up a lot of her energies, her emotions, her thoughts, her feelings. And all of that has an impact on how we're going to go through perimenopause and menopause. So more important than anything, I think, is to really look at the emotional stuff because emotions can create toxicity in the body. And in theta healing, we have, we call it the three R's, resentment, rejection and regret. And they're very heavy energies in the body. And just by clearing those, makes a huge difference to your energy, your emotional health, physical health as well. I mean, you know, weight in the body can be just the weight of emotions you're carrying. So it's so important to do this work at perimenopause. I think it's interesting that you brought up a seven generation healing. I actually do a seven generation healing with my clients. And I asked, do we need to go through the paternal line through your father's line? or the maternal line. What I find on an emotional level for women in menopause is they need to develop a health, if they haven't already done so, a healthy relationship with their body. And women of all ages really struggle with body image and self image. And if you didn't like your body before menopause and you don't work on that emotional relationship with your body, it's gonna get even more challenged as you your body goes through these changes so some of the things that really help are really learning your beauty type and it sounds so superficial but really realizing that you can be beautiful at every age and every size now what about on the mental level what do you recommend for women as they go through menopause on the mental level yeah that's a really interesting question because i think um Mental and emotional health are um, very closely related. Um, and we're going through a lot of brain changes as well in menopause. Uh, there's a book, um, I think it's Dr. Louise Brizendine, who calls um, Menopause the Upgrade. Which, you know, we're always making new neural pathways. So on the mental level, I would look at it's how we handle stress um, and bringing in tools to handle stress um, in a more balanced way so that it's not going to have the huge impacts it's going to have on the body. Um, I'm sure you're aware of epigenetics, um, Catherine, being a medical intuitive. So our bodies are our For our audience, things. can you explain our audience in a nutshell what epigenetics is? Yeah, so epigenetics. Um, Dr. Bruce Lipton and the Biology of Belief is a wonderful book to start with to introduce you to epigenetics, but it's Basically, that we create our own reality through our thoughts and feelings. So our hormones, our endocrine system, doesn't directly interact with the outside world. It responds to our thoughts, our feelings, and our perceptions. So we talked earlier about the cup of coffee and the lion. You know, your body's only going to, um, your hormones are only going to respond to your thoughts and perceptions. So if we're able to manage those, um, that's, you know, that's um, how we keep good mental health. I mean, something I practice with bit with the theta healing is if something triggers me emotionally, um, I might have an initial wobble, but then I come back to self and connect. And anything that emotion triggers us emotionally, that's something within us that needs healing. So we can't um, expect to be at peace um, if we're not at peace within ourselves. So we should be able to be at peace regardless of what's going on in the outside world right and one of the things sense. that we know is that your mind controls your emotions so a really good affirmation at every age is every day i'm getting better and better so finally melissa Ayers, and this will be our final question for our interview what about on the spiritual level what can we do as women on the spiritual level to manage menopause better well, that ties in beautifully, actually, with what we were just talking about with the mental level, because in the mental level, we're very much in our head and the spiritual level, we're in our heart. 
and just reconnecting to your heart energy, just feeling your, visualizing yourself breathing into your heart because our heart is so much more intelligent than our head and that's where a lot of our spiritual wisdom intuition um and the, tr the truth of ourselves really lies so spiritually um meditation is a wonderful practice i think theta healing is wonderful that's something that's really supported me um in in menopause but really coming back and understanding you know we're not just a physical body we're energetic, we're spiritual as well. Our body is our vessel for living on the earth plane. Uh, we're so much more than that. You've been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, Definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Our guest today has been Melissa Ayers, menopause coach. And remember, as you keep yourself balanced on physical, energetic, emotional, mental, and spiritual levels, you can go through menopause naturally and easily. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Natural Healing Show. Keep it natural.